talking about gift giving. And it's interesting if you were to look at the nativity scene and to see the gifts that were truly given as we dissected. It is truly amazing to see the gifts that were given that very first Christmas. There is a great big difference, I think, between how we view Christmas as a child and how we view Christmas as an adult. When I was a, a kid, I remember months before Christmas, I would be searching all over for the presents my parents were going to give me on Christmas. I mean, months before I look under the bed, I look in the closets, I go in the attic, I go in the garage, because my parents don't know how to hide them everywhere. I started finding gifts before uh, Christmas. My parents had to start hiding them at other people's houses. <laughs> so I wouldn't find them. And so as a kid, when you get the, 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 the gift, I remember my mom had to wrap them in a hurry and put them under the tree before I'd find them. And I can remember uh, days before Christmas lifting up the gift, trying to guess what it was, trying to the way, you know, what it could be. Just, I, I would sit there and we had a... Uh, Christmas tree with a, a train set and a major scene, and I would sit there for hours just dreaming of what I was going to get for Christmas. But as an adult, it seems to change that you want to give gifts to others and to your family and your kids, and you want to give just the perfect gift. And you think about what is the perfect gift that you want to give someone. And uh, uh, is that true for most of you? We, we think about what we're going to give instead of what we're going to receive. The, the bankers gave me something and uh, they put thought into it. And I can remember, they, and they said, you said this in a sermon one time, and what they got me was one of those uh, breads, the local bread, and it has scripture verses in them. And when we were, when I was a kid at the dinner table, we would take out one of those scriptures and we would read it uh, before our dinner. So they got me that gift. And, and me and my family, we read, we read it the last night, so it was really, really good. Those gifts that you get, they go, you know, somebody put thought in that. They remember something you said, and they gave you exactly what you wanted and what you needed. And so I want to talk about that today, today really the greatest gift yet at Christmas time. If you look at your outline, we're going to look at the very first verse uh, found in Luke chapter 2. We're going to look at verses uh, 8, 9, and 15 through 18. And it says this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. And they were terrified when the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Now, if you know something about shepherds, you might say that to a shepherd, their flock was their life. Their job was to care for the flock they would take them to pasture lands. They would protect them. Uh, if there was a, 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 a stream or a river with water, um, the sheep could go in the water because of their wool. They could get taken down downstream. And so they would make a place of still waters for them that they wouldn't be in danger. And also, uh, a sheep, sheep will not lay down unless they feel safe. And so they would make a safe environment for the sheep. So for a shepherd, their flock was their life. But write this down. The shepherds gave their time. They gave their time. Those shepherds, as soon as they were finished listening to the uh, angels, they took off for Bethlehem. And it's like, you know, what sheep? <laughs> And here we see they just seem to leave in order to go and see what was happening in Bethlehem, that a Savior was going to be born. And if, as you and I make a connection for that, when you and I, when we connect with the God of the universe, there's something dramatic happens. Heart changes. Priorities change. We give the Lord our time. Even you here today. 
on Christmas morning, you are giving the Lord your time that you are here. I had several people say, well, Pastor, are we going to have church on, on, on Christmas Sunday? And I had a lot of people out there, we're going to have church. And, well, yeah, we have church every Sunday. <laughs> but it's Christmas. <laughs> and you know what? That's more of a reason to be here on Christmas morning. Now picture this, this is God, the God of all creation who wrapped himself in flesh and came and dwelt among us. And I tell you, they came to be where Jesus was. Just like all of us. We want to be in the presence of the Lord, amen? amen. And so they gave of their time. And I think one of the most precious commodities we have in this life, what is it? Time. Time. As I said, time goes by so fast. And you know what? To give the Lord time. To give the Lord time. You've heard me say this before. If, if the devil can't make you bad, he's going to make you busy. <laughs> Too busy to give up your time to the Lord. You know, there's a lot of temptation sometimes, even for me. I, I'm a pastor, and, and I'll just confess right now. Uh, I read the Bible a lot. But you know, there's times... Where I'm, I've, I've been so busy doing things for the Lord. You know what? Sometimes having that personal time can be tough. But you know, there's no greater thing that you and I can give is of our time. You know what? Coming up in this, this new year, 2012. I tell you, there's all kinds of things going to be going around. Uh, uh, apocalyptic stuff that we're going to be hearing about. But I tell you, there's no greater gift that you can invest in the Lord and invest in your life by giving the Lord time, reading every single day, giving the Lord of your time, being here faithfully, serving Him. The shepherds gave of their time. And then number two, the wise men gave their resources. Now this is interesting. When they open up their gifts, the wise men we see, they gave the very least that they could give and get by with. No, no, no. You know what the white people did? They gave their very best. You know, isn't it sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we give the very least that we can get by with? Come on. Don't get religious on me here. Come on. Sometimes we try to give the very least. Now look at this. Matthew 2, 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. They opened their treasures and they presented him with gifts of what? Gold, Gold frankincense, and myrrh. You hear me talk a lot about the relationship of the gifts that the wise men gave at Christmas time. Folks, the Lord deserves our very best, doesn't he? Come on, if we knew that the Lord was here, would we travel long distance to give the Lord a very best? Guess what? The Lord is here. <laughs> they gave gold. They gave gold. You know the gifts they gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh would be, could be used in any culture. Wherever they traveled, they traveled from Egypt to Nazareth. And, and we know that they traveled a lot. And the gifts that they gave could sustain them for a long time. And they gave them gifts that could be used in any of the cultures, in any of the places they travel. But greater, the greater sense is that they were giving gifts that were so appropriate for who this baby Jesus was. The gift of gold. The gift of gold, the gift of gold you would give to a king. And it talks about the lordship, the kingship of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the king of kings. They gave frankincense. Frankincense. It, it was a type of, of, a, of an incense, like the high priest in the Holy of Holies symbolically would give as the prayers of God's people would go up. It was a sweet aroma, a sweet incense of the high priest who would be the go-between between sinful humanity and a completely holy, perfect God. Jesus is our high priest, isn't he? He is the go between, between us, sinful humanity, and a holy God. 
and he became that bridge for us. He paid the price for us, and then that verb, that death spice, was used in all the cultures back then that would be put on the body to symbolize that Jesus was going to be our sacrifice. Mm. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? And so the gift that they give is very symbolic of who Jesus Christ is. Mm. He is our king. He is our high priest. And he is our Savior, the one who takes the sin away, is from, from the world. And then, number three, the angels gave their message. The angels gave their message. In fact, the word uh, angel that uh, translates actually means messenger. That's what the word angel means. They were God's messenger to share a message with the people. They shared a message with Mary, with Joseph, and with the shepherds. Look what it says here in Luke 1, 28 through 31. It says, The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. The first message was to Mary. Gabriel told Mary that she was specifically chosen to fit into God's eternal plan. His plan for her was that she would be the mother of the very Son of God. She would be the earthly mother of the Savior of the world. And then we see the messenger, uh, the angels giving the message to Joseph and then to the shepherds. So let's read that here in Luke 2, 9 through 14. It says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today the town of David, a Savior, has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord but beside the Lord, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. The heavenly hosts, the armies of the living God, was there praising the Lord with the angels. And it's amazing. Who imagine, imagine the message that the angel gave to David Town. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Mm. The angels gave their message. Do you know the Lord gives us a message? Each and every one of us has a message. Each one of us has something that God has given to us to share with someone else. I tell you, there's been many times in my life that the right person at the right time has come and given me a message from the Lord, or they've given me God's love to me right at the right time, that helped change me and put me right where I need to be. Do you know what? All of you have the ability to bless someone. All of you have the ability to encourage someone. All of us has a message. You don't have to be a great preacher. The message you have is simply this. You know what, this is what God has done for me. I don't know a lot about the Bible, but I do know this. God's changed my life. And so, I believe God has given us these things. He's given us time. He's given us resources. He's given us a message. And we're called to share that message with others around us. And then number four, Mary gave for life. Mary gave for life. Her very life. See, now, for Mary, it was not as though that Mary shows up at the nativity and she can just go home. <laughs> Having given uh, the Lord a gift, and we see that the, the uh, shepherds left and, and the wise men left, but Mary was there with the responsibility of taking care of Jesus. She really gives of her life. Look what it says in Luke chapter 1, verses 31 through 38. It says, You will be with child and give birth to a son, 
and you are to give him the name Jesus. How will this be, Mary asked? The angel said, I'm a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Now, can you imagine being Mary, a, a teenager back in the Bible days, and she is engaged to Joseph, and yet she becomes pregnant. And she gives the story that she is pregnant from the Holy Spirit. How many of you would buy that one these days? Well, probably the same way that they didn't buy it back then. And she really gave up a lot in her life. She gave up her very reputation. She gave up the big fancy wedding. And really her life was a, a hard life taking care of Jesus. Sometimes so overwhelming, but so joyous. And she had the responsibility of caring for the life of Jesus, loving him and being there. Can you imagine the mother of Jesus being there watching him being crucified on the cross? Mary gave of her life. Folks, I believe we have a responsibility what the Lord has given to all of us. You know what? We have time. We have resources. We have a message. We have our lives. But do you know what the Lord really wants? He wants our heart. He wants our heart. Because if He has our heart, He will have our life. He will have our resources. He will have our time. Folks, our heart is the greatest gift that we can give to the Lord. Because it's something we freely give. The Bible says that one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we get the freedom like the white men who knelt down and worshiped the Lord. It is something you and I can do every single day that we give of our lives. And the reason we do it is because the present that the Lord gave to this world is himself. And the gift that God gives to us, the very first thing, gift that we can see if you write this down, God's gift to the world, God gives us peace. Would you write that down? He gives us peace. Look what it says here in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. It says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. One of the names of the Savior Ruler is Prince of Peace. One of the distinguishing marks of his kingdom is that it will be Rule of Peace. People worry about all kinds of things. They worry about the political system. They worry about the finances, not having enough. They worry about war. They worry about peace. We worry about our health. We worry about death. We worry if we don't have enough money, and if we have too much money, then we wonder about, worry about all the taxes we have to pay. <laughs> but for those of us that join the kingdom ruled by God, we get a taste of the peace of Christ that is ruled in his kingdom, and we get a taste of his peace right now. Folks, as a pastor, I get to see through different people's lives. And I'll tell you, through different chaos that goes on, there's no amount of money to buy the peace that God gives those who trust in him. The peace of God. You could be raging in a big old storm in your life, but you know what's amazing? Like the story when Jesus is there, he is asleep in this boat with the disciples, and the boat is rocking up and down. The storm is so violent, it's taking in water, and the, the disciples in the boat are, are frantic and they're worried, and they go down, Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care? Was Jesus bothered by it? No. He had no peace to be asleep. <laughs> and he gets up, what's all this loss? He said, peace be still. 
And out of the was peace. And the disciples were freaking out. Who is this man that even the waves and the wind obey him? Hmm. Peace be still. One of the gifts that the Lord offers us at that manger is the gift of peace. And then the second gift that he gives to us, number two, he gives us hope. He gives us hope. I tell you, hope is one of the greatest things that we have. I've seen people in hopeless situations. And when you talk about the Lord and you talk about how God can turn things around, I've seen God turn the blinkest things around. That's the faith and that's the hope that we have in the Lord. Hey, the hope is God turns all things to good. Amen? We have a future and a hope. And that's the good things that He gives us. God turns things around. All things work together for good. He'll never leave you, nor will He ever forsake you. It is the hope of heaven that we have. There's a story about a man named Simeon. He was a high priest. And it was told to him that he would not die until he would see the Messiah. And so he lived his life in hope. Look what it says here in Luke 2, 25 to 32. He says, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous and a devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought the child, Jesus, to do of him what was the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Because he saw the hope that was represented in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who would take away the sins of the world. And then three, he gives us a future. He gives us a future. You know, there is, there is something about the widow who loses a spouse. And what happens is the spirit of a, a widow says, my best days are behind me. But you know what's interesting? I believe the Lord can even give widows and gives all of us a spirit of a bride. We are called the bride of Christ. You know the difference between the spirit of a, the spirit of a widow looks at the best days are behind her? A bride looks with great anticipation of the future. And I know that's a message for somebody that thinks that their best days are behind them. I'm here to tell you, your best days are coming. He gives us a future and hope. Let's look at this verse in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen? He has good things in store. 2012, I believe it's a year of hope. A lot of people in this world think it's going to be a year of doom. I believe in Jesus Christ it will be a year of hope for those who believe. Amen? And then the last one this morning, number four, God gives us His presence. God gives us His very presence. You know what? I can wake up in the morning and I... I just live my life as though the Lord is right there. You know why? Because He is. And when we live our lives in the presence of the Lord, we can live a great life. Sometimes we want to say, hey Lord, you stay here. I'm going out tonight. <laughs> it's Friday night, Lord. I'll be back. <laughs> Guess what? I love the fact that my mom used to say that to me all the time. Hey, Brian. I, I won't be there tonight with you, but I want you to know the Lord's going to be there with you. <laughs> and the Lord sees everything, right? And you know what? Wherever I went, I took the Lord with me. 
because my mom instilled the presence of God in my life. I want to instill the presence of God in your life. It's what we celebrate at Christmas time. Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let's look at this last verse. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. But you know, like every good gift, every good gift, how many of you are given a gift this year? How many of you plan to receive at least one? Okay, most of you. Someone gives you a gift, what do you have to do? You have to receive it, don't you? You know, there's a lot of times, I believe the Lord is the gift to this world. I believe that it's the greatest gift ever given. God himself wrapped in flesh. But you know what? As God gives himself, there's a lot of people that don't want to receive it. You know when Jesus came in Bethlehem? Do you know that there were, there were people around that hated Jesus? Remember King Herod? He wanted to destroy Jesus. You know why? Because he heard that there was another king, king of the Jews coming. And King Herod didn't want to share his kingdom with any other king. So he was trying to find out baby Jesus and he was going to kill and try to kill all the babies. Because he didn't want to share his life with them. But then we see those who gave gifts of their time, their resources. We see Mary and Joseph who embraced Jesus and received Jesus. So my challenge for all of us today is that we would be like Mary and Joseph. That we would receive Jesus, nurture Jesus in our lives for this coming year. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you today. Lord, we thank you for what Christmas is all about. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that, Lord, that you chose to humble yourself and to come to this earth to be born in a stable, Lord, in a, a barn with animals. And, Lord, that you came in humble means, not to be served, but to serve all humanity. And so, Lord, we thank you that you humbled yourself to be born in this earth. Lord, to ultimately come and to live and to die on the cross for all of our sins. That, Lord, you are our Savior. And, Lord, your word says that we believe that you died upon the cross and that you rose again, that thou shalt be saved. And so, Lord, we receive in our hearts the gift of that you have for us the gift of peace, the gift of hope. Oh, Lord, the gift of a future. Oh, Lord, the gift of your presence. Lord, we receive you and receive all that you have for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. Stand with me and we are going to.